Hey class, welcome back. Um, we are heading into the shoulder complex this week with chapter 22. Uh, I hope that you guys are um, picking your injury for the rehab project. Hopefully you've already posted that into the discussion. Um, also, remember there's a quiz at the end of this week. Um, so it'll be on this shoulder lecture as well as the wrist hand elbow forearm lectures um, so make sure you take that quiz by the end of the week um, other than that we'll just dive right into chapter 22 shoulder complex um, if you haven't already read it in your textbook try to read it right after this um, remember you can skip the stuff on evaluations and special tests and stuff like that Okay, so the shoulder um, is one of the more complex joints in the body um, just because of the range of motion that occurs at it, all the different muscles that pull on it, um, and then the other thing is the high degree of mobility. Um, so if you think about how your shoulder moves, it has more range of motion than pretty much any other joint in the body. Um, and so that just adds a level of complexity when you're evaluating it, when you're rehabbing it. Um, so we will talk a little bit about that. Um, if you think about the anatomy of the shoulder, it's a ball and socket joint. Um, and I like to describe it as a softball sitting on a plate. Think about a softball sitting on a plate it's not very stable right you don't have to move the plate a lot for that softball to fall off and the shoulder is very similar in the fact that uh, the humeral head doesn't sit very well inside of the glenoid cavity and so it's very easy for it to fall off the edges uh, just like a softball falling off of a plate um, so it's very easy to dislocate or sublux the shoulder joint because of just the bony anatomy of it. Um, think about other ball and socket joints, they're more like a softball sitting inside of a bowl. Softball inside of a bowl is much more stable than sitting on a plate. Okay, and here's a picture. <clears throat> um, this is what we're talking about right here. Okay, so the humeral head right here is like the softball, and then this glenoid cavity is like the plate. So you can see that humeral head's not really locked inside that joint at all. It can very easily move up and down, forward and back. Um, and so the shoulder relies a lot on the musculature and the ligaments to hold it in place because the bony anatomy doesn't really do that. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about the bony anatomy. We're going to start all the way over here. This is your sternum, okay, this whole long piece of bone, and it's right in the middle of your chest. Um, and down at the bottom of the sternum, you can't see it on here, but it's your xiphoid process. And then this middle segment of the sternum is called the body, this body of the sternum. And then up at the top, right at the bottom of your throat, is called the manubrium okay and the manubrium part of the sternum attaches to the clavicle okay and this clavicle is also called your collarbone okay so if you think about what your collarbone is that's your clavicle okay so this joint right here is called the sternoclavicular joint it attaches the sternum to the clavicle okay and the interesting fact about the sternoclavicular joint is it is the only true joint that attaches the shoulder out here and the rest of the arm, okay, upper arm, elbow, wrist, hand, forearm, all of that is only connected to the body via this sternoclavicular joint. It's the only true joint holding it in place, okay? Um, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, but the sternoclavicular joint is the only true joint attaching the upper extremity to the torso. Okay, so then we follow the clavicle out. Um, right here, we have this bony, 
prominence is called the acromion process, and that's actually part of your scapula that's hiding behind the rib cage here. Okay, this big bone behind the rib cage is the scapula, and this acromion process is um, part of that scapula. Okay, and so this joint right here is called the clavicular, sorry, the acromioclavicular joint. Okay, so acromioclavicular joint attaches the acromion of the scapula to the clavicle. Okay, and the scapula back here actually doesn't articulate with the body. It's actually free floating. So it kind of sits back there and it glides back this way. It glides out. It upwardly rotates, but it doesn't actually touch the rib cage at all. It kind of floats across it. Okay. So we got the acromion process. Then right here is the glenoid cavity. Okay, this flat part is called the glenoid cavity. And this round part right here is called the humeral head. And those two make a joint called the glenohumeral joint. Okay, and that's usually what we're talking about when we talk about the shoulder joint. We're typically talking about the glenohumeral joint. Sometimes we'll be talking about <clears throat> the acromio. <clears throat> clavicular joint. Excuse me. All right. Um, and then out here we have the humerus. Okay, we learned a little bit about that when we were talking about the elbow, because the elbow is, you know, down here. Um, so there's the humerus. Okay. That's all we really need to know for the bony anatomy. Um, I'm going to flip to the back so that we can see the scapula. Okay, remember the scapula is just free floating on that rib cage. Um, and then there's that acromion process and that glenoid cavity. Okay, there's another process called the coracoid process. We don't talk about it as often um, just because it doesn't play as big of a role in shoulder stability. Okay, the, the scapula has different borders to it. Okay, the superior border, the medial border, meaning this is on the uh, medial side closer to your spine. And this is the lateral border. Okay, towards the outside of your body. That's why that's where the glenoid cavity is. So your arm would be coming out right here. Okay, and then we have the inferior angle at the bottom. And up at the top, we have the superior angle. At the top. Okay. So those are just some aspects of the, uh, of the scapula. Um, one more. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but the scapular spine starts right here next to the acromion and actually comes all the way out across here. Call it the spine of the scapula. Okay. Next diagram, we're looking at some of the ligaments. Um, I don't need you to actually know, um, well, we're going to do just one ligament. But the main thing I want you to know is you see there's the white tissue here is all the ligaments. Okay, so white tissue here, there's a ligament, ligament, ligament down here. Um, so what ends, up, what ends up happening is that the shoulder joint is really just one big capsule of ligaments. Okay, so anytime you sublux or dislocate your shoulder, that capsule can be torn. Um, and there's definitely specific ligaments that can be torn. Um, but it's really just one big capsule. Um, but one important one that we could talk about um, is at the acromioclavicular joint right here. So this AC joint, as we call it, has a ligament right there. And that acromioclavicular ligament can be torn when you fall with your arm outstretched and your arm gets forced upward more than it wants to go or when you land directly on your shoulder. Um, so it's very common in football. Um, we see it in other, usually contact sports, um, but it could definitely happen in soccer, rugby, hockey, um, sports like that, um, where this ligament gets torn. And what happens is that since that's torn, now the scapula doesn't stay up very high. So this acromion process will drop down really low and you'll have this big separation between the clavicle and the acromion process because it'll sit down here. Um, 
and then the term that people use is it's called a shoulder separation. Um, but a shoulder separation is just a sprain of that AC joint. Um, and it's, it's very common in sports. Okay, here's another look at the glenoid cavity. Okay, so this is looking from the side of the person and looking into their arm and shoulder. Um, and this is the glenoid cavity. So you can see that the actual amount of space for that humeral head to sit on is very small. It's not very big, right? Um, and then this is that capsule of ligaments that sits around it. So it really relies on all these ligaments to provide stability and the muscles. Um, and this bony part is very, very small and doesn't help as much. Okay. Um, we're going to look at the muscles from this angle. Okay, so um, this is the outside more of the shoulder, the more superficial muscles. Okay, we got um, pectoralis major, that's your chest. Deltoid comes around the outside of your shoulder. Um, we already talked about some of like the biceps and the triceps. Um, but there's four specific muscles that I really want you to know, and those are the four rotator cuff muscles. And the rotator cuff muscle's responsibility is to keep that humeral head inside that joint socket um, compressed up against the glenoid cavity. Okay, and so the supraspinatus right here at the top, the supraspinatus runs right along the top of that spine of your scapula. And you can very easily palpate the spine of your own scapula if you put your arm uh, across your body and over your shoulder you feel the spine of your scapula as it comes out towards your shoulder okay and then you feel it hit right at your acromioclavicular joint right there okay so the supraspinatus sits right on top of that and its job is to compress the humeral head into the scapula into the glenoid cavity and keep it compressed and tight in there okay then we have three other muscles the infraspinatus, and the infraspinatus just sits right below that spine of the scapula. Okay, so supraspinatus right on top, infraspinatus right on bottom. Okay, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, this little muscle right in here, okay, sits right next to the teres major and right next to the latissimus dorsi. Okay, so teres minor, infraspinatus, and then the subscapularis okay and this view um, picture this with me this is from the front of someone's body so they've removed the torso so we're looking right through their their chest right here so we're looking right through this part um, they've removed the muscle and the rib right there so that we can see to the front of the scapula which is really, if you were looking at someone's back, it's like it's underneath their scapula. Okay, and that's the subscapularis. Okay, so those three, the subscapularis, the supraspinatus, and the infraspinatus, they all work to keep the humeral head in position inside that glenoid cavity, mainly pulling it down when you bring your arm up overhead. So as you bring your arm up overhead, those three muscles work to pull it back down into the glenoid cavity so that it doesn't dislocate. Okay, so they provide stability to the joint. All right, um, if we're looking at, at this from the outside, okay, on a person's body, this is where the manubrium is, clavicle comes out, AC joint, glenohumeral joint, okay, the deltoid sitting over top, the pec major, Okay, and you can see that from the side as well. Um, you can look at these closer in the in the PowerPoint if you want. On the back side, okay, supraspinatus right here, infraspinatus right underneath, okay, teres minor right in here, and then the subscapularis is underneath, but we can't really see that. Okay. Um, like we said, it has a great degree of mobility, and that means that the rotator cuff is very, very important.